It's Friday, April 8, and this is your for Davis Today News Update. So glad you could join us. Two teachers are facing disciplinary charges for running in the January 19 general elections. Barbados Today understands that Alwyn Bab, a teacher at the Lester Vaughan Secondary School, who ran on a Democratic Labour Party ticket in St. Peter, and Pedro Shepherd, who flew the DLP's flag in the St. Michael South East constituency, were served with letters from the Ministry of the Public Service this week, informing them that disciplinary charges were laid against them and they would be sent on leave with half pay from Wednesday for a period of six months. General Secretary of the Unity Workers' Union, Caswell Franklin, who indicated he will be representing Bab, contends the teachers are being penalized for exercising their constitutional right to run for a seat in Parliament. There is nowhere in the Public Service Act that says a teacher cannot run. The Constitution bars three offices from running. The office of a judge, person who holds that office, director of public prosecutions, and the auditor general. In 1974, the then Prime Minister brought amendments to Parliament to remedy that. He wanted to include other public officers in that group. And he made provisions in the Constitution that Parliament may prescribe other offices that cannot run. Some, this is 48 years ago. 48 years ago. And they have not, they have not um, made those uh, appointments. Uh, they, sorry, they have not made the names of the other officers that cannot run because only Parliament can do it. Mm -hmm. And they are saying that he bre they have breached the general orders. There is nothing in the general orders that say a teacher cannot run. There is nothing in the general orders that say a permanent secretary cannot run. President of the Barbados Road Safety Association, Charmaine Roland Bullen, and Chairman of the Alliance Owners of Public Transport, Roy Raphael, are calling on government to tell Barbados the real reason breathalyzer testing has been put on hold. Speaking at a press conference at the General Insurance Association of Barbados on Thursday, Roland Bowen insists that the opportunity to ensure safety on the roads, especially with cropover around the corner, has not been ignored. For those in authority to come public and say the breathalyzer will be delayed due to the fact that metering in taxis must be addressed, must first be addressed, that is insufficient. That is not enough. It is nothing, in my opinion, but a lame excuse only intended to delay the implementation of this very important and valuable safety device used successfully by many countries across the world, across the world to combat and reduce the number of motor vehicle collisions and fatalities. Raphael said AOPT joined the BRSA in calling on the government to come clean on the matter. He contended that breathalyzer testing must be introduced to help create safe roads for road users. Time has come for government to introduce the breathalyzer for the safety of the Barbadian public, the little children, right, who have to get to get across the road and, and those persons who go about their business. My PSV operators who drive their buses. And the numbers, let me also make it clear that the numbers have dropped significantly. The number of operators who found themselves drinking on Fridays and Saturday nights. I don't know if because it's sweet drink would have gone up. I don't know. Tourism officials are concerned about the steady decline in visitor arrivals from the region over the past several months, although they are hopeful the crop over festival will result in more business come July and August. Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Rudy Grant, said since the collapse and subsequent restructuring of Caribbean airline LIAP, there has been a dramatic fall off in visitor arrivals from the region. The, the, the regional airlift is challenging. Um, it, it is nowhere close to the airlift that you would have had in 2019. A lot of that is due mainly to the fact that um, LIAP, as you know, has gone through some serious restructuring. And the additional um, airlines that have come in and the seat capacities that they bring um, has not been able to replace the um, LIAT um, seats. 
so we do have a, a challenge there. Um, the the carbine uh, arrival numbers uh, is in the vicinity. I think it's 11.6 percent. Those are the um, that's the percentage share of arrival numbers. Um, Pre-pandemic, that was around I think 15 percent. It was that that had, that market and the Canadian market. They were um, pretty much the same. So we have, have seen a decline in the carbine market. And uh, that is due mainly to the fact that the air seats coming into Barbados are not as high as they would have been before. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, the Antigua and Barbuda government has removed vaccine mandates for all categories of incoming travelers. This is the government's latest move as it continues to ease restrictions in line with the fall in COVID-19 infections. The cabinet says it lifted the requirement at its meeting Wednesday following talks with hotel stakeholders who had previously asked the government to keep the measure in place. And they were of the view that the maintenance of those protocols gave them a marketing advantage in the sense that Antigua would have been perceived as a more safe environment and for the time being it had acted as uh, a point of attraction for them. Um, however, the Minister of Tourism did indicate yesterday that they are now uh, prepared to work along with the government and relax those uh, conditions. The government had earlier removed the requirement for the country's nationals and residents, but has now lifted it for all incoming travelers. Nonetheless, travelers might want to keep their vaccination certificates close by since unvaccinated passengers must still present a negative PCR COVID test on arrival. This test must be taken within four days of boarding their flight. In the meantime, Minister Nicola says the government is keeping a watchful eye on emerging COVID strains, including the latest Omicron subvariant XE. We keep looking at it, but we have not yet seen any inflection in the number of persons who are, um, are reporting um, being affected. And certainly um, there's no evidence yet that that particular strain um, is, is, is unsure. Of course, we did note yesterday that there was um, a sig significant spike in the number of infections in neighboring Barbados. And as you know, the local saying goes, when your neighbor house is on fire, you wet yours. So but he says if Antigua and Barbados does see an increase in cases, it will not shut down the economy or reintroduce any other drastic measures. On the international front, India's government is blaming the war in Ukraine for petrol and diesel prices soaring to record highs. Higher transport costs are causing more popular items to be more expensive. We get more in this report from Al Jazeera Television. This is one of the biggest wholesale fruit and vegetable markets in New Delhi. Thousands of street vendors come here every morning to stock up on produce from traders. Most of the bulk goods arrive in trucks from neighboring states. This truck here, it comes from Sambal in Uttar Pradesh. It used to cost 50 cents for a sack of potatoes two weeks ago, and now it costs 60. The price of petrol and diesel have gone up, so this increases too. Those increases are being passed on to shoppers such as Salmati Devi, who has to feed her four children on her earnings of four dollars a day. We're buying less. When prices are going up, we buy less and eat less. People will spend according to what they earn. Some people have jobs, some don't. Everyone is helpless. Almost daily fuel price rises over the past two weeks have led to protests by opposition parties in many Indian cities. Oil companies began raising prices after a four-month pause, while Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janta Party was campaigning in recent state elections. India's Petrol and Gas Minister says many other countries are suffering much higher rises. 
and blames the war in Ukraine for disrupting oil imports. But the government raised fuel prices 63 times in the first half of last year when there was no war. India was also among just a few countries that increased fuel costs in the past two years when crude prices were crashing because of the pandemic. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.